Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome to my channel here, Licious. So yesterday, one of my subscribers actually sent me a comment stating that Repsol slash Shiseido's RCH01 is expected to reveal their results in about two months. So somebody had actually contacted Dr. Suboy, who is currently overseeing the clinical trials in Japan for RCH01. And they actually reached him via email and Dr. Suboy stated that the results are going to be open in two months time. So I'm guessing that he means that the results of the clinical trials from phase two is going to be published and hopefully it's gonna be accessible as well as the possibility of discussing the potential commercialization of RCH01. But the good thing is we still have at least a time frame of when to get an update from Repsol and Shiseido. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what they have in store. I did cover the topic of RCH01 not too long ago in one of my most recent videos. But Repsol did release a newsletter in March of 2019 where they addressed their company progress and also their product development. And they also did state that the clinical studies of RCH01's phase two was successfully completed in Japan and that they expect Shiseido to discuss their near future plans for RCH01 for commercialization. But as of, as of today, uh, Shiseido has been pretty quiet and there hasn't been any announcements as far as their commercialization despite a 10 month hiatus. The main issue that I discussed previously in my older video, uh, in my opinion, is that Shiseido and Repsol were obviously having issues where Repsol did not complete their share of the research, uh, which would be phase two clinical trials of RCH01 in Germany as they had agreed. And therefore Shiseido was obviously furious and they claimed that they're not going to be bound by the agreement anymore and that they didn't have to uh, share the results or revenue with Repsol. And I just feel like Repsol is just too dependent on Shiseido and they just rely too much on Shiseido's results and confirmation. And the other funny thing is that the CEO of Repsol, Lee Bucker, is also quite a character. For example, there was a time when he actually asked Twitter users to ask Shiseido in Barcelona, Spain about their release plans for RCH01, which I think is just pathetic. And to make it worse, the stock prices for Repsol has been steadily dropping. Repsol is obviously the one that is screwing things up. And I really don't blame Shiseido for withholding any updates on RCH01. But the good news is that Shiseido, having completed their human clinical trials in Tokyo Medical University and also in Toho University Medical Center in Japan, could possibly launch RCH01 in Japan earlier if they decide to do so but current planning anticipates the potential for all of their products to be on the market in Japan by 2022, which also includes the RCI02, which is their thermal injector device. But hopefully we get some good results in two months and see how they plan on moving forward with RC01. Uh, the good thing is that Shiseido marketing RC01 is not going to be contingent on the breach of the contract uh, being resolved with Repsol. And another thing to point out is the fact that we have to remember that Shiseido built an entire facility in Kobe and they spent a good chunk of their own funding for the sole purpose of researching RCH01. So I feel like it wouldn't really, or they wouldn't really have invested so much money unless they knew that RCH was going to work and be effective. I'm really crossing my fingers, hoping for some really good news from phase two. Uh, and hopefully we get some good news in two months time. There's been way too many companies who have failed with hair cloning before, particularly, I don't know if you guys remember, but a few years back, there was two companies that attempted to do something similar to what Shiseido and Repsol is currently doing. Um, the two companies, Intercytex and Adarin, had results that were very promising with hair that was able to be grown in labs that was thick and multiplied. But the idea was later, I guess, scraped away because it was, it was considered by investors that the market for it wasn't sufficient due to their failure to provide significant regrowth. Shiseido's RCH01 is not going to be a full cure for hair loss, um, but I'm confident Shiseido and also Repsol, especially with Yofoto to help distribute their derma device in mainland China. And most importantly, another thing that I did not ever mention regarding RCH01's treatment was the price. A lot of you guys have been asking me, how much do you think is RCH01 going to cost? So. I managed to go ahead and look through some of the forums and somebody had mentioned an article from Shiseido's Vice President Iway, and he stated that the fee to receive RCH01 treatment is going to be at least 100,000 yen. So that converts to about $900 USD. And so until now, like I said, I had no idea about the cost of the procedure and expected it to be really expensive 
given the fact that you know it's going to involve isolating the thermal sheath cup cells and multiplying them and then having them injected into you uh, areas where you guys are balding but obviously this is good news nevertheless since it's going to be somewhat affordable for most people now until we hear further news the best thing we can always do is wait and when it comes to hair loss treatments always keep your expectations low so that you guys are never going to be disappointed um, <laughs> Same thing with a bunch of other hair loss treatments such as broad solution, which was a failure. Um, but if you guys are able to keep your expectations low and when something big does happen and it's actually very effective when it comes to treating hair loss, it's just gonna be that much greater. Also, if you guys are looking for a proven method that is scientifically proven to regrow hair, look into micro needling with minoxidil. You guys already probably know that I am a huge advocate of using micro needling. So studies do show that micro needling is going to help increase blood flow into the scalp, which means that nutrients are going to be able to get to the hair follicles. It's also going to go ahead and create hair growth factors in helping hair growth and inducing collagen production. So make sure to check out my website at hairlicious.com for micro needling devices, as well as derm rollers. But once again, thanks for watching guys. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave me some uh, comments below and I will talk to you guys next time. Take care.